You're obedient and patient for what you want. You're obedient and patient for what you want and for what you can control. Guys, every day in our life, we walk in obedience. There's some of you that are, you know, rowdy and do what you want to do. But every day we walk in obedience. We get up and when we're driving, we're obedient to the stoplight. We're obedient to the traffic lanes. You're obedient and patient when you're standing in line waiting to pay for your groceries. You observe patience and obedience. Listen, when you go to the barbershop, you know you have to wait your turn. You sit, you wait your turn. Why? He could have three people ahead of you because you want to get your hair cut. You want to get, you know, you're trying to get your haircut for an event or simply just for maintenance. You're going to sit there and you're going to wait. You have faith when you get paid that there's an EFT that's going to put your money in the bank. You don't go check. You're not looking. You're not double checking. You're not triple checking. You know, you have faith in this plastic card you have in your hand that when you put it in the machine, you have faith that machine is going to take your card and it's going to give it back to you. And you have faith that that money is going to come out. You exercise faith. You exercise patience. You exercise obedience in so many different ways. Every day in our life, in every way, you walk in faith and obedience. You have faith in your doctors. You have faith in your attorneys. You have faith in your brokers. You have faith in your employees at work to show up, except for that one that hardly ever shows up, <laughs> always late, right? But nevertheless, faith. You walk in faith and obedience. Even when you don't want to go to work, you get up and you go. You go to work. Lots of things you do that you don't want to do, but you do it. Right? But the thing is, guys, you do these things because it's what you want to do and it benefits you, right? You don't want to go to work, but you want that check. You may not like your boss, but listen, this is your job for right now. You go to the beauty salon and you sit there in the spa and you do whatever because it's going to benefit you. Why are we struggling with the things of God? When in every way you walk in obedience. Well, here's the thing. We want benefits from God, but we don't want the conditioning that it takes. Why, God? Why can't you just give me what I want? Why can't I just get what I want right away? Why do I have to go through this? Because in the end, you're going to go to a place that's eternal. And you're a spirit. And the character, if you want to call it that, the character of your spirit must be in line with the things of God and the nature of God. Otherwise, you will be that same person with that same selfish, toxic way. And you cannot, there can be nothing unclean. In heaven, there can be nothing unclean in the presence of the Lord. So now that we're here on earth, guess what? This is a time of our proving. This is a time of our conditioning. This is a time of our pruning. So that our spirit man, we learn selflessness. We learn patience. We learn love. All these things and the Holy Spirit helps us in those areas that we come up short. So that guess what? We are worthy to be in the presence of the Lord because God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, cleanses us and makes us so. That's why you can't just get whatever you want. You will be a selfish soul. And there is no place in heaven. There's no place in the presence of God for a selfish person. There's no, you have to go through things and get your anger under control and diminish because there's no place in the presence of God for angry being. You go through things, long suffering. Yes, you go through all types of things. It's tough. Your obstacle course may be having experienced death. Your obstacle course and your conditioning may be having experienced um, rejection. All these things. But whatever it is, 
It's because we are conditioning the inner man because the inner man is what will still be after the outer man has perished. And that nature and who you are, you're going to be that same way as a spirit. And guess what? You will not be able to be in the presence of the Lord like that. So go through your process now. There are things we willingly do and patiently wait for here on this earth because it's something we want. You go to work and you discipline yourself because you want your paycheck. You sit and you wait at the light. It's the law. That's what we do. And even if you're impatient, you sit there and you, oh, oh, you hit the steering wheel, but you don't move. Now those, they go beaming through and they will meet up with consequences, right? Guys, we're already walking in faith. We're already walking in obedience. We are already walking in that in our everyday life. And you know why we do it? We live in a world of order. Order. You go outside. In spite of the chaos, there's order. There are lights. There are streets. There's there's signs. There are rules when you go in a store. There are rules when you go in church. There's rules when you go to, to the stadium, there are rules when in your in your own home. We're constantly walking in rules, obedience, and order. So let's not resist the Lord because the things that He's trying to show us is to teach us how to live better lives here on earth, how to be a help to one another, and He is definitely conditioning us now on this earth so that we are in our spiritual nature of such where we'll be acceptable to be in the presence of a holy God for eternity. I hope this makes sense. Peace out.